Hey, what's up guys? It's Jamie. It is October 5th, Wednesday, 2022. And um, I just left a building um, I was looking to, to work a deal on, right? And um, I'm not going to really get into that, but I, I can tell you opportunities are starting to come up. Uh, it's a vacated building, commercial building that... I'd have to I have to look into a little bit more, but the, the guy is willing to deal, right? And and I, I think I could even get a, a seller finance deal with him. And, and the reason why that's attractive to me is because he can offer a better rate than the banks are right now, and he's motivated to sell. So if uh, the banks are at seven eight percent on a commercial loan, and I have to put twenty thirty percent down. If he says, hey, I'll take 5%, 10% down, or, or nothing, <laughs> because he is looking to get somebody on the hook because they need some work, and uh, and I'll give you 3%. You know, for example, I'm not saying that's the, the deal I've negotiated, but um, the building is probably worth a couple million bucks, and, and it probably needs, I would say, a couple hundred thousand at least of, of you know, some of some work some uh, upkeep to bring it bring it to life not nah, probably more than that probably close to half a million so you know like those are the things you can negotiate where if uh, you find the right deal you might say hey I, I was gonna have to put 20 or 30 percent down on a property that would cost me that same amount of money 300 to 500 thousand down and then if you only have so much cash like me I don't I don't have I don't have unlimited amounts of money. I have people that could probably, you know, give it to me. But if I'm using my own money, I prefer to negotiate terms and say, "Hey, I would prefer to use this money for the, the the rehab if I can," you know, versus just putting it down as a down payment, then have to come up with another three hundred thousand, four hundred thousand, or whatever it is, ten grand, five thousand dollars, whatever you have to come up with. I would prefer not to use my money. I would, prefer, I would prefer to use other people's money or the bank's money if, if the numbers make sense. But anyway, that's where I'm leaving. Um, I lost the building the other day. The guy, it was a small commercial building. The guy wanted 700 grand. I offered him 800 and he still said no. And I can see I just passed it. He ended up buying, selling it to someone else. And they put a plumbing, uh, looks like a plumbing business there now. So anyway, life doesn't always go the way you plan or hope, but you got to get it up to bat. And the purpose of this video today was, you know, A, I just want to quickly talk about Adobe uh, as far as a stock reference, because again, middle-aged dad, not financial advice, uh, four kids just trying to have the attitude of uh, investing for stocks, options, cryptocurrencies. You know, I might add precious metals in the near future, but I'm not, I, I haven't done any of that yet. Uh, real estate. And, uh, and self investing and self investing mean like you know learn self betterment uh, and, and the more educated you become and you can get a YouTube education you can get a podcast education you can get an audio book education or you know you buy a program it doesn't necessarily just mean you have to go and get a college education not that I'm saying don't go to college but, um, being informed is going to make you ha uh, enlighten you and give you perspective that you don't have and might create some opportunities. So uh, I'm, I'm an advocate of that. So today I want to talk about some stuff for my son, uh, my oldest son, that, that I'm trying to encourage him to you know where to put the money right now. Like if I was your dad or your older brother or your uncle and you said, Uncle Jamie, what do you think is a good place for me to put some money right now? And I'm going to get into that in a second. But for Adobe, um, that was a play I made on the $100,000 personal challenge for Robinhood for the year end on how you take a $500, $5,000, whatever you're starting with, and growing it to 100 grand. How you do it, how you succeed and fail, and that's just what I kind of showcase. So my last transaction, basically for $29,000, I had 100 shares of Adobe, which I thought is oversold, according to my, my interpretation of what the, the price action is and things that have happened. Now it went down into the 270s and it could go lower. And yesterday we get, I, I, you know, the day before I was negative 1,700 bucks in the value of my stocks. I didn't sell because I'm patient. 
and I think it's worth it's going to be worth in the you know in the three hundred dollar range somewhere, and I'm just waiting for that before I take profits, and that could take weeks or months, you know. But but that's my conviction. Uh, there's things that you cannot control, like the weather and the roads and other drivers. Like when I drive every day, um, but I try to be defensive and and um, preempt what other drivers are going to do. So with stocks, I don't know what's going to happen and how the market's going to react to inflation and tax rate hikes and Black Rocks and uh, uh, Ukraine and Russia and China and all the things that are influencing the marketplace is calling fear people cashing up into to the dollar, right? Where the dollar is like strong right now. But inflation is still high, you know, and, and um, you know, th these rates keep going up. So that has a ripple effect. So Adobe, I think, if I'm parking some money somewhere, and you're parking your money somewhere, regardless, you're, you're, you, whatever you made this week, whether you're a millionaire or a billionaire, or you're just living check to check, um, you spent that money somewhere. You bought a good and service, goods or services, meaning you bought apples, right? Toilet paper, you're gonna use that money to pay your rent or your mortgage, uh, gas to get to where you need to go goods and services and you might have nothing left over um, I, I've been there where I'm like in the hole uh, using credit cards right moving money around just to, to, to make ends meet uh, which is not a good feeling is not a good place to be so when they say money can't buy you happiness that's I agree with that but it certainly helps you have a peace of mind and empowers you to get some stuff done you want to have money versus and good credit versus not having it if, if that's an option, all right? So, Adobe is going to eventually, I think, get into the 310, 320, 340, maybe get back to 360 before it plummeted down and had a massive overreaction. So I'm being patient. Yesterday, my stock went, went from being negative 1,700 to being positive $300. So there's a $2,000 swing, you know, on my money just sitting somewhere where I'm like, I'm parking it there anyway. So I didn't sell because I thought it's not where I want it to be yet. But at the same token, it went to 296. I could have sold, I don't know where the top is for the, you know, for that rally. And then it came back down to 290. And then last time I checked it, which I don't check all day long, it was like 291. So something to keep in mind and, and strategies is whatever the stock is, if you're, if you're swing trading stocks or investing or day trading, whatever you do, I'm not a day trader, is when a stock goes up in price and it goes over what you own it for, you know, you could always consider selling, locking in the profit because you'll never go broke locking in profits. And then you get back in again. I mean, look, it went back down to 290. I owned it at 293. So, and that, and that, uh, and, and that aspect wouldn't have made more sense to sell it at 295, 296, and take the you know take the profit, and then buy back in at a lower, you know at a lower cost. But my fear was, what if it shoots up to 360, and I'm going to miss it? I'm going to miss that. That is my thinking. That was the reason I didn't sell it, because I'm like maybe this is the rally that I'm looking for. <clears throat> so you're never going to get it perfect, right? But but again, it's never a bad idea to, 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 to possibly sell some of those shares, right? And I have 100, and the reason I have 100 is because if I want to sell a covered call um, tomorrow on Thursday, or even Friday, depending what how much I could make, I might want to consider that, because I can make two or 300 bucks on top of whatever profit, if it hits that target or not. So those are things I think about. And you're going to weigh it out and then you're going to make a decision. You're going to act on that regardless of, of the outcome. So that is my Adobe um, input feedback, uh, you know, regarding that. Code. So the next thing is um, what you should do with your money right now. And I'm, I'm already at 10 minutes here, so I'm going to only talk for another couple minutes. If you were my son... If you were my nephew, if you were my good friend, uh, and you cared if my opinion mattered and my input, then I would um, encourage you 
to consider saving five to 10 grand if you have no money. If I was 20 years old or 21, my oldest son will be 21 this month. My encouragement to him is, you know, write a budget. I've said that before. Look at what your expenses are, how much is going out, how much money that you have to spend on whatever those expenses are, your car insurance, your cell phone bill, whatever, whatever those things are. Uh, and then how much money net you have coming in. You know, like after I pay taxes, whatever other things I'm required to pay, what am I left with? So if I'm left with $1,500 and my expenses are 2,000, there's a problem, I have to fix it. I have to make some adjustments. If I'm left with $500 in the positive, in the black, the green, whatever you want to call it, then I gotta say, what am I doing with that money? My first thing that I would do is I would save up at least five grand to 10 grand um, and I would make that my number one priority, however I could do that. Because if you have some money saved, if you have some money set aside and you're like, okay, I got a little buffer. If you get unemployed or if something happens that are, is unexpected, you're gonna feel better you know, about having some, some money in the bank that you can rely on that's not investment money whether it's short term or long term it's money they're saying i need this money to do other things i'm already able to meet my expenses uh food shelter clothing uh like ray dalio i like you know like what he said right especially right now uh basic health care so long as you can take care of that and maybe dental you know as you say okay let me make sure i can have food shelter clothing and hopefully some health care and dental um i throw that in there um and then whatever extra is not to go buy some sneakers I want or to buy uh, a watch that that uh, that I think is cool or, or just things that you probably don't need. Let me tell you, right now I'm driving this 19 Jetta GLI 35th anniversary, which I think is a cool car. It's only got 47,000 miles and, uh, and I was going to get rid of it, but I, I'm going to buy it out of my lease because I lease a car usually two or three years. And, uh, and as I'm getting older my mindset has changed. I really like the Porsche Macan GTS, and I can afford to buy that car. It's not a two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars car. It's probably seventy-five to ninety-five, depending on how you outfit it. Um, but I can't really justify the expense. It doesn't make any sense to me to do something like that, even though I really want the car. I'm like, that's a cool car, but I don't need it. And we're going into this, or in it, or we're going into a recession if we're not, you know, already there. So I'm like, I have better ways to spend my money. So that extra, if it was cash out of pocket or if it was uh, a monthly payment, it's a liability. I don't want to spend that money. I'm just giving an example of something I personally wanted. So I'm going to continue to drive this car. So instead I took a couple grand and put new brakes, rotors, and tires in this car and did some services that needed to be done. So I'm ready to go for another two or three years. And to buy this car is only 14 grand. And it's probably worth in the low to mid 20s so uh to me that is a smarter move for me right and you get to weigh it out and you draw a line and you you map it out so i would say the first step is whatever your extra money is whether it's one dollar five hundred bucks five thousand whatever it is after you've saved up whatever that number is that you need to now i was talking to my son who was 20 going to be 21 i said hey man let's let's shoot for 10 grand let's try to get to 10 grand as soon as possible and, and let's learn the disciplines of what am I, how much am I spending? How much do I have coming in? Because as he gets older, because time is on his side, if you're a younger person, if you're, uh, you know, if you're 20 or 30, then obviously you got an extra 5, 10, 15 years to, to get more stuff done and to, 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 you know, to put the money away, right? You ever watch that show? It's called, uh, oh my gosh, it's, a, it's like a baking show or something. Not cake boss. Uh, uh, oh my goodness! No, I can't think of it right now. But it, it's it's a show where they have these bakers. There's three or four shows. You probably are saying it right now. But uh, and I, I've watched it many times, and they get eliminated, right? But if you win the challenge, and the 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 chef, the guest chef, and the other chefs come in, and they say, "Oh, this is really great," and they win it, then they get time added. They get time added to the final, um, you know, bakery, the, the the final stage of the the, the event. So they get to um, have more time to to bake their cake. So if you're afforded more time to bake your cake, so to speak, then um, 
you can afford to make some mistakes. Not that you want to, but like if a mistake happens, you, you know, you know, you know, like oh, I only have two minutes left, or I only have ten minutes left, and for me to redo this recipe is going to take me more time than that. Then you may not have it. You may be like I got to think of something else. I, I'm out of time. So if you're 45, 55 years old, or 55 or 65 years old, your time to save, your time to uh, invest, your time to pay off debt, your time to uh, increase your income, right, through various sources, whether it's through your career <clears throat> or through other passive income things, such or cash flowing incomes, whether they're dividends or real estate or businesses you invest in, is shorter than someone who is 20 or 30 years old. So I'm encouraging the younger person, male or female, to, to consider that, <clears throat> but to get to work and start those disciplines right now, because I certainly didn't do that. Nobody told me that stuff. So let's go for 10 grand, and uh, and you can't manage what you can't measure. So you got to make sure you look at that. And then the next thing, you know, the, the credit's going to come. We'll talk about that some other time. Uh, and in, in investing, like I talked about Adobe a little bit, and, uh, and I don't know if I mentioned, I don't think I did, because I went over this in my head, and now I'm already over the time. <laughs> but I'm going to leave you with this. Whenever I go to a stoplight, and the light turns green. I never just go. When it turns green, I don't just go, all right, whew, when I take off. I wait a second or two because a lot of times somebody is trying to beat the light. They're trying to make that yellow light before it turns red. And a lot of times it turns red and they blow through the light. I've learned that. So I always wait a second. It's preempting the other driver because I want to avoid a collision. And that wouldn't be my fault if I drove and he smashes into me. It's his fault or you know, his or her fault. But what if I get hurt or killed or vice versa? They do. It's not worth it. I'd rather just say, let me just wait a second and let it play out. And I do. And there's been many times where I've done that where I'm like, I'm glad that I didn't do that. And I try to teach my kids to do that or and say that, hey, when you're driving, wait a second. I was telling that to Gavin, my 16 year old who just got his license in July. I'm like, you know, just wait a second before you go. Don't be impetuous. Don't be impatient. And it's the same thing with investments in stocks. And my opinion is that if you're patient, when I look back over my shoulder and I look at the things that I did, some of them on accident, and, and patience was a factor, whether I was forced to have patience or I just chose to have patience, it usually paid off. Adobe was down 1700 bucks. Now, granted, it could go back below that. But I was patient. And I didn't panic sell. And it came back up to 300, whether I should have sold it or not. Um, uh, but it did come back on because that's what I believed it would do. And I believe it will go up higher. That's the map I drew out. I have my strategy. Um, you can adjust your strategy, but you got to look at those factors. Um, uh, and, and that is what I wanted to, to really share today. Okay. As we go into these scary times of uh, what, what's going to happen, right? How is this going to affect my household? Because at the end of the day, I'm in my driveway where I live, and, you know, this is my world that God has given me. This is the, what this is what's entrusted to me today, and uh, and, and that's what i got to kind of focus on. So um, we'll talk more about that tomorrow or the next day or the next video, but uh, that's what's on my mind. Okay, guys, have a great Wednesday. I will see you next time.